Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week five of Friday Night Frenzy, presented by the Venice Pub and Pizzeria of Ishpeming. I'm Sam Ali, he's Jerry Taylor, and we're men wearing makeup talking about sports. Kind of heard that one before, but it works right here. Thank you very much, Sam. There's a team up in the Copper Country that's quietly having another solid season. That team would be the Lakeland and Hubble Lakes. The Lakes are involved in this week's Martin Sports Apparel Game of the Week. Let's get to it. Lakeland and Hubble was in lines taking on Mark Leaf and the Purple Hornets tonight. Second quarter, the Lakes leading 24-14, and they add to it here. Blake Dupe on third and goal rumbles his way in for six, extending the LLH lead to 16. Two minutes until halftime, Lance looking to move the ball downfield. Brayden Koski back to pass, and he would find, well, the arms of Lucas Klein, who takes him down for the sack. The Lakes called timeout, got the ball back with a buck, buck 40 to go until halftime. The trickeration, a triple reverse. Brandon Middleton, though, would be run over by Kyle Lake as he comes in and lowers the boom. Under a minute to go till halftime, the Lake's still marching downfield. Dupe takes the ball on the pitch play, and he's going to rumble and bumble his way inside the line's 30-yard line. Tick, 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 tick. Under 20 seconds left until halftime, Lakeland and Hubble goes to the air. Arthur Lyons finds who other than Lucas Klein, and he makes the grab. He's going to go inside the one and a half yard line. Timeout Lake. So with three seconds left, the Lakes roll the dice. Sam, where are they going to go? Right up the middle. Right up the middle with Mr. Middleton on the QB keeper. He's in. Touchdown Lakeland and Hubble. The Lakes execute their two minute offense to perfection. They went big in lots tonight. 51-14. The Lakes are now 5-0 on the season. Another big game went down tonight as Menominee got the best of Kingsford 27-24. Menominee came in as the number one team and Kingsford was number four. So there could be a shakeup, possibly a shakeup in next week's UPSSA poll. There will be no shakeup though with Ishpeming as the Hematites win at Norway in convincing fashion tonight. 40 zip over the night. Sam, take it away. We go now to Gwyn as the model towners try to take down a hot Nagani Miners squad. Nagani quarterback Brock Aho would leave this out one early, but Eric Hurst would step in and on his first play, he finds Dylan Tassin in the end zone for six. Miners lead 14-0, but the model towners would respond. Quick pitch to Chris Bosworth and the Boz puts Gwyn on the board, but they're down 14-6. And the Miners, they want to add to that lead. Shane Ring. He's going to get the ball, and he will be untouched and go all the way to the house. And Nagani takes a two-touchdown lead, but Gwynn would not back down. Kevin Roberts rolls out, and he floats this one to Hunter Bachman. Ooh. Beautiful pass, and he gets the model towners within striking distance. Next play, and it's Devin Dox, and he packs a punch into the end zone. And the deficit is single digits, but not for long. George Johnson, he could. Go all the way. The Miners would pull away in the second half as they top Gwen 52-22. Let's go back to the scoreboard. Smunicine was feeling it tonight, obviously, as they shut out Manistique on the road. 55-0 the final there. Iron Mountain hosted Westwood, and the Mountaineers inside the yellow walls there in Iron Mountain also pitch a shutout 28-0 over Westwood. Bark River Harris continue their dominance as they defeat North Dickinson tonight for, I believe, the second year in a row. 30-22 the final in that one. And Forest Park gets 266 yards and four touchdowns from backup running back Jake Donnell. A backup running back with 266 rushing yards. Forest Park, your winner, winner, chicken dinner, 44-24 at Newberry. We go to Marquette now as the stands were packed to see the Redmond battle with the Gladstone Braves first quarter. Redmond up 13-0 and Scott Tripp will keep the ball himself. You know what they call him, JT? What's that, Sam? Scotty football. Scotty football. 15-yard TD and Marquette is up 20-0. Redmond get the ball back on offense, but this time Tripp feeds it to Jack Cochever and JK is not JK. Get it? Just kidding? Marquette is blowing this one open. Later on third down, Gladstone looking to get on the board. Ben Schwalbach rolls to his right. Looks like he's going down, but he flips it to Owen Carlson. And he picks up the first down. Schwalbach channeling his inner Teddy Bridgewater. Just stop it. Few plays later, Schwalbach looks to his right and sends it deep to Hunter Garling. And Garling comes down with the early favorite for catch of the year. Garling just snatched that one down and takes it in for six. But the Redmond offense was in full throttle mode tonight. 
Tripp takes this one in himself. Scotty football. Marquette gets another big conference win as they defeat Gladstone 46-16, the final score. Back to the boards in the Copper Country. Calumet won big at Hancock. Robert Urkula had four rushing touchdowns in the first half. And in Houghton, the Gremlins upend West Iron County 44-22. A big win tonight for Houghton. Ironwood's rough season continues to be, well, rough as the Red Devils fall to Northland Pines 35-6 and, uh, and Lake Fenton takes down Sault Ste. Marie 42-33. We head next to Berga where the Jets of North Central look to spoil homecoming tonight. First quarter, NC already up 8-zit. Check out Bobby Kleiman on first and 10 from the Berga 38. Kleiman goes untouched for six to make it 14-0. The ensuing two-point conversion. Kleiman not going to go in unscathed here, but he still takes care of business, putting the Jets up 16. Let's check out another North Central back, Tyler Bentley. Oh. A little move at the line, and Bentley puts it in cruise control from there. A 29-yard score for Bentley, 22-0, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Berga now with the rock with third and one near midfield. Austin Smith finds Josh Sutherland downfield, who makes the catch for first down, but penalties would end up killing the Vikings' drive. The ensuing drive for the Jets. Jason Whitens with third and nine from his own 26. Airs it out deep. Bobby Kleiman makes the catch and well, we're all just living in Bobby's world. I hope you catch that 90s reference. Oh, absolutely. Kleiman, 74 yards to the promised land. North Central puts up another basketball score. They're good at that too, last time I checked. Like 66 points tonight in their big win against the Vikings. To the eight-man scoreboards as Ewan Trout Creek needed overtime to get the job done against Antonagon 12 to 6. And Engadine puts on a show for the home crowd as they beat Rapid River 62 to 30. Mild upset there. We keep the fights coming here as the Joburg Cardinals at home tonight looking for a win over Ski Valley rival St. Ignis. First quarter, Saints with the ball. Quarterback Gage Keski calls his own number, number one, and that's a good play to call because there goes Gage down the sideline and he will be hauled in just inside the two-yard line. So that play works so well for the Saints that guess what? They dial it up one more time, one yard for number one, 7-0 St. Ignis. Guess what? That works so well for St. Ignis. In the second quarter, the Joburg Cardinals try the same thing and they tie the game at seven. Joburg actually had a lead going into the fourth quarter tonight, but St. Ignis scores with just a few seconds to go, and the St. Ignis Saints, they get a big win tonight on the road, 27-21 over Joburg Luston. To college volleyball, and the Michigan Tech Lady Huskies lose their first home game of the season as they fall to Ashland 3-0. Jacqueline Aird had a game-high 18 digs, and Lauren Emmert collected eight kills. The Huskies are 10-2 on the year. More women's volleyball action as NMU was home against Lake Erie tonight. First set, Wildcats on the return. Jamie Hogboom to Madison Whitehead. It gets blocked. Lisa Studnicka keeps it alive, then immediately goes for the kill. Nice play there. Point goes to the Wildcats. Later, Autumn Monsma on the serve, and the Storm dig it, but it goes right to Studnicka. Easiest point she had tonight. NMU looking to increase their lead. It's Hogeboom. To uh, Hojeboom right here to Bridget Russell. No chance. The Wildcats sweep the storm at Vandeman Arena. 3-0 the final score. Let's check out the women's, so women's soccer scoreboards. Northern Michigan was on the road tonight as they fall to Ohio Dominican 3-0. And it was just a tough day for Tech Sports as they fall to Walsh 1-0 the final in that one. Right, week three is upon us, and we've got some primetime matchups to look forward to. The Lions will look for their first win of the season as they host Denver at Ford Field on Sunday Night Football. Then on Monday Night Football, the Packers will look to remain undefeated as they face the Kansas City Chiefs. First time in a first time ever, Detroit has hosted a Sunday Night Football game. Might be the last time ever because it's going to be ugly someday. It's going to be really bad. For mm -hmm. now, I guess I'm going to have to take Detroit to go 0-3 and, and the Packers to go 3-0. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, big football game up in Houghton, right? We will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, hopefully, like I said, if it's, it's competitive like last year, that's the that's the kind of games you'd like being to. And there's going to be a huge turnout from both sides. Oh, yeah. 2-1-1 uh, from Northern. Text 3-0, like you said. And uh, I get to go up tomorrow night, drive and uh, let you do the work, and I'll just uh, kick back and uh, watch a very good contest. I don't mind. It's what I like. All right. Uh, I think we did pretty well tonight. I think so. All, All right. Righty. Let's well, go to the weekend. Yeah. He's Jerry Taylor. I'm Sam Ali. Thanks for joining us for Friday Night Frenzy. Jimmy Kimmel is next. Have yourself a great week. See you later.